Hello ladies and gentlemen, now uh, welcome to my corner of the internet. My name once again is Jason and today we're back with some more Space Quest 3 and the Pirates of Pestilon. Last time we uh, defeated Arnoid the Terminator. I have absolutely no idea if that's his actual title, but he I'm pretty sure that was an Arnoid unit or something 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 to that extent and we got his invisibility belt, which is right here. We'll take a look at that. It's the Terminator's invisibility belt. We've also got some Buckazoids, an Astro Chicken flight hat, Thermo Weave underwear and an Orad on a stick. Well, uh, if my memory uh, if my memory is correct, I believe we are done on the planet Fleebut. I, you know, I, I, am I even pronouncing that right? Let me see. L look, look, look at planet. Uh, look, <sighs> look around. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I, when I get back on the ship, I need to look at the spelling because I've just kind of eyeballed it before and just gone, eh, it's flea butt. But uh, I'm not even sure if that's um, if that's even the, the 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 correct pronunciation for the strange word. But eh, whatever. We'll, we will see. So basically, we're going to be heading back to the ship, and we're going to continue our exploration across the galaxy. And it's going to be great, it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be a fun time for all involved, hopefully. Uh, okay, there's a, a, a dangerous Scorpazoid, we're going to walk off the screen, come back, and he's still going to be there about uh, three times. Or two times. I, I wasn't counting. It, it, was, it was more than one, I can confirm that. So, uh, you know, I really love the lightning effects in the background, which reminds me I need to... Oh, that's cool with the, the thunder. Um, I need to uh, make sure I do a little bit of tweaking before I get to Space Quest 4. Those of you who, uh, who've played Space Quest 4 probably know what I'm talking about, but... Uh, sorry, the lightning hitting the mountain in the sp background reminded me of something. Anyways, we're not, we're not playing Space Quest 4 right now, we're playing Space Quest 3. So sit down. So we're sitting down, let's go ahead and save the game because... Of course, we're playing a Sierra Adventure game, and death is, and it comes with the territory. Look at screen. All right, we have our radar in, uh, is on. Let's turn on our engines. And we're going to hit three to take off. And away we go. Wow, that was quick. We're already in space. All right, look at screen again, because we're going to go ahead and use our navigation system to find somewhere new to go. So we are there. And we're gonna, let's see, let me see, flea butt. Yeah, I'm, I'm about right, flea butt. All right, we're gonna continue resuming our scan. You know, after all this crazy adventuring, I think Roger's a little bit hungry. So we're gonna stop in at the Monolith Burger Fast Food Dive. It's, so uh, we're gonna head set course for there. Cal uh, sta uh, stand by, calculating course. Course locked. I don't know if that's, we'll say clever, um, Loading screen or what, but... Oh, right, Jason. Uh, you're an idiot. I need to actually, you know, fly over there. So I can hit four for cruise speed, which will take me forever. It's gonna take a while to get this speed. You've got time to get up and make a sandwich or wax the car or something. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, look at screen. Well, I can maybe use attack speed. What's attack speed? This speed is great for astral combat, but not for jumping across the galaxy. This would take, this could take forever. Of course, the right answer is to use light speed. So we're going to go ahead and hit five for our light speed. And away we go. Doom. Ah. Luckily, we don't have to hear this sound for too often. A flashing message on your monitor attracts your attention. Throttling engines back. Approaching monolith burger. And here we are, and as we, as we can see, the the, uh, the Enterprise appears to be docked. And that's the original, so I believe Captain Kirk's gotta get his grease burger on. Yes. I, lo I love that, I love the idea of a, of a burger joint in space, I don't know, it just, it just cracks me up. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about the logistics in this, what, what must, yeah, with the ducking maneuver completed, the engines shut down. Welcome to Monolith Burger. And we're gonna go ahead and get off. You pop the hatch and ramble on in. I'm just, I'm just imagining, you know, the logistics of getting all the supplies out here. Well, then again, you know, if light speed is as quick and as it was, as we just saw, then I guess maybe it's not that big of an issue. All right, we're, we are now, actually, you know what? No, this is a new event. We need to save this as something significant like mm, MB, because that could mean so many different things, including monolith burger. All right, so let's take a look around as we should in a, in an, you know, in an adventure game. Look around. 
The decor, like the food, is the same in Monolith Burgers all over the universe. Generic counter clerks are eagerly awaiting to help you. Diverse life forms are crowded around the counter and sitting in booths consuming what can only loosely be termed food. And if we actually, is that a Sarian down at the bottom? Like this guy right here that I'm right next to, the, the green guy. He, I don't know, he, he, he kind of has the same design as the, um, the, the, the helmet that, the, the helmeted guys we saw in Space Quest 1. I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna satisfy some curiosity. Uh, Sarian? A, oh, E-N, there we go. Okay, no, it's not. It just, oh, it's a two-headed alien. Never mind. Look at aliens. Your eyes take in the diversity of alien forms without much interest. After all, uh, you're quite a spacefaring kind of guy. Yes, for a janitor, and this guy is like, you know, just scratching his butt. Alright, so let's let's walk around. This this little location in on the map is two screens long. And we've got a door here which leads to another ship. Well, let's just go on to that ship. Cause I don't want Get out of my airlock, geek! And he punches us out. Oh, he's not happy about that. Where did he go? Did he go around the corner? Is there a bathroom back there? Oh no, it just loops back around. Well, finally d that. I'm just gonna- Wait, wait, that means he left his ship. I'm gonna get, go into it. Haha. -ha. Ah. He just punches me back out. That's not what I was expecting. Okay, he, he- 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 evidently he went back when I wasn't looking. But now we know for a fact he's gone, so we're gonna get on his ship. Oh crap, he's following us. That's it for you, bozo. Pow. And a pulse blaster blaster wait, a pulse laser blast to the forehead is not your idea of fun. Fortunately, it didn't hit anything important. Get it? The joke is that he has no brain. Get it? Okay, you get it? Alright, good, good. I was hoping that might have gone over your heads. Uh let's see here. Alright, so we could go ahead and order something. There's this guy here at the the counter. He's like ready to take our order. So let's go ahead and do just that. Welcome to Monolith Burger. May I take your order? Yes. Okay, I'll just order then. So here we have the menu. Now, what do we want to purchase? We can get the mini monolith, the monolith with the monolith with poly cheese, the filet o, -o rat, jumbo monolith with poly cheese, the big belcher combo, which includes a jumbo mono with poly cheese space buds with extra grease and sloppy slurper. Actually, that sounds fun to say. Monolith fun meal, the space buds, uh, tang. Copyright small, medium, large, and sloppy slurper. You know, I, I'm, I'm, he's feeling pretty hungry. Let's go ahead with the. Actually, I'm not sure. Do we want to go with the big belcher combo, or do we want to go with the fun meal? Hmm. We could go with the big belcher combo or the fun meal. Why do I have a feeling I'm supposed to go with the fun meal? Let's go with the big belcher combo first. Why the heck not? Thank you. And uh, cue to quit, I guess. Would you like uh, something to drink with that? Yes or yes? <laughs> I love that the only choice is, is yes. Would you like some space buds with that? Yes. Would you like a blat fruit pie with that? Yes. Special today, a free drink with every purchase. Uh, okay. Your total is nine buckazoids. Do I do? Do I have to actually type in pay, or can I just walk away with it? I don't even know if I have it. I don't have it. Oh, he probably just won't even serve me. All right, I'll, I'll pay. And now he's gonna go get to my greasy food. Have a nice day. All right, take. All right, take. You gingerly pick up the greasy bag. You can hardly wait to have a seat and dig in. All right, so I didn't let me type it automatically. Had me pick up the food. All right. Yeah, because you know Roger's been in sitting in stasis forever, so. No, oh, hey, he's probably probably quite hungry. So let's stee. That's right. Let's stee down. Eat food. Does he just keep doing this? Can I can I interrupt at any point? No, he just keeps eating. Okay. Hmm. That was mighty tasty. Well, maybe mildly tasty. Well, maybe not tasty at all. In, in fact, it reminded you of the slick skin of a Vorlian mucus worm. Um. How would you know what that tastes like, Roger? Look in bag. The tattered remains of your meal lay strewn about the table. Ah, look at bag. Look at food. The okay, so that, that, that clean up. Okay, get up. I. You walk over to the clerk. You won't have to shout across the room. If you walk, I said get up. Stand. 
There we go. Okay, so the person doesn't understand getting up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did mess something up. We're gonna need to uh, order something. And I was pretty sure it was the fun meal. I, I, I was right. I, my, my initial instincts were to get the monolith fun meal. That's basically the, you know, the kids menu. Would you like the drink? Space buds, blah, 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 and your total is seven buckazoids. So let's go ahead and pay that. And I think our score actually changed that time, so that's a good thing. Have a nice day. Now, um, we'll, exp uh, we'll, we'll, you'll understand why we needed the, the fun meal thing uh, in just a second. Oh, it automatically made me sit down. Did it? No. It did that time. Okay. Um, one thing I want to note though, it, I like that they gave me a lot of buckazoids, so I could just keep buying stuff uh, That way there, you know, I don't run out of money because there is no way to get more money in this game So if you basically spent all of your money, then you were screwed also Roger's hair appears to be coming over the inventory menu as you can see right beside the okay button All right, let's eat food Roger was really hungry. He, he was, he's been sealed away for a very very long time So, you know, he's got to get down to some serious munching um, all right, let's let's speed through this a little bit. Wow, that took a while. All right. Ow! Hey, what's this in my burger? Oh, it must be my new fun meal prize. Hey, it's a swell decoder ring! That's right. Mmm, okay, and then the usual message. All right, so we got a decoder ring. Ah, there's an item we needed. And where is it? The monolith decoder ring. With this ring, you can decode any secret message. Well, almost any secret message. Excellent. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and save the game because we have made some significant progress. All right, so now that we're all filled up and ready to go, what the heck is this thing? Well, if we learn anything from Space Ghost 1, any machine sitting up in a some sort of joint should be investigated. So let's look at machine. It's an Astro Chicken machine by Scumsoft. Astro Ch Chicken must land on the Astro Chicken landing pad. He's depending on you to bring him to safety. Insert Buckazoid. Controls left, uh, left, right, up, down, and uh, there's feed. Hit the landing pad too fast and you'll bounce back up. Landing outside the landing pad is fatal. If you fly too high, you'll bounce off the atmosphere and plummet back to the surface. All right. So uh, let's actually, let's try playing. Can, uh, can I press a button to play? It costs one Buckazoid. Well, let's, let's hit pay. Okay. Insert Buckazoid. There we go. So basically, it's a, an arcade game where we have to land a, uh, you know, Mr. Astro Chicken here on the platform. If he hits the ground, he dies horribly. Uh, I don't think I was ever good at this game. <laughs> that, that, I, I hope that's not too evident. Let's try this, this one more time. Uh, okay. Up, up, up you go. Down. No, no. Okay. There we go, Bookark! And there we go, Bookark. I, I got, the, I got the hang of it. All right, let's. Uh, it's like Flappy Bird. You just gotta, gotta make it kind of go up and down, up and down, kind of thing. Oh, I don't know why I compared it to Flappy Bird because it's nothing like Flappy Bird, but y you get the idea. No, we're gonna. Oh, we didn't die. We didn't die. We died. Okay. Oh, uh, we're bouncing off the trampoline, and let's try to do this again. Yes, Bookark! Uh, no offense to the guys from Scumsoft, but I, I was a little bit more partial to Miss Astro Chicken than, uh, uh, than standard Astro Chicken. And I think I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! It's actually uh, pretty challenging because you have to, you have to hit the button up. It's not like you hold the button down to fly up, you gotta hit it up to sort of, uh, toggle flying up. Same thing with the directional buttons. Oh, there we go, okay. So basically, as you're going down, you hit the button to start flying, and then you kind of have to push it again to stop uh, stop flapping. Holy cow, this uh, this goes on for longer than I, th I remember it going. There we go, okay, landed on the platform again. And we did it again. And then we get this strange message, and it's like, what the heck is this? And what we're supposed to do is use the decoder ring to solve what this mysterious message is. Uh, now, fun fact though, when I first played the game, I actually decoded this without using the decoder ring. Um, I'd come off of, uh, was it playing, was it Island of Dr. Brain or something? Where there was a thing where they teach you how to deal with ciphers and I notice repeating patterns for 
different symbols, and some of the symbols actually look similar to uh, letters. Uh, something about, uh, like, uh, for example, actually, I'll use the mouse for, uh, to point out something. Oh, I can't use the mouse. The mouse is not here. Why is the mouse not here? Where's my mouse? Okay, never mind. Well, basically, third line down, first two, ru uh, first two words are small room on, um, oh, that's pestulon. All right, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and maybe off, actually, can I just use decoder ring? Yeah, so we actually have to go ahead and decode it manually, so what I'll do is I'll uh, maybe grab out a piece of paper and decode that for you guys. Alright, so I went ahead and I uh, decoded that. Uh, pretty, actually most of it I was able to just sort of figure out by looking at it, but there was a few parts where I was like, I'm not sure what that, what that letter is, and rather than going ahead and trying to you know, do all the hard work of figuring out, the, we'll say, the, the, the symbols themselves, I just decided, hey, let's just go ahead and use the decoder ring like we're supposed to do. So basically, the message is, help us, we, uh, I, I may have mistranslated something, so just bear with me. Help us, we're being held captive by Scumsoft on the small moon, not room, on Pestulon. An impenetrable, impenetrable force field surrounds the moon. It must first be deactivated. It's, it's possessive, there should not be an apostrophe there. I'm disappointed in you two guys. <laughs> Sorry. Its origin is unknown to us. Scumsoft security is armed with jello pistols. We're counting on you, whoever you are. Two guys in trouble. So, we were, we got a distress signal which was dis basically hidden inside this arcade machine by the two guys or from two guys who are in trouble. Well, 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 I guess we know where we need to go. We need to go to Pestulon. And uh, I don't remember seeing that on our list of uh, places we can go, so... Let's go ahead back to our ship, because I'm pretty sure we're done here at the burger joint. So we're gonna go back to our ship. You know, I see this long line of people standing there waiting to get served, and somehow Roger was able to go up and get served first. Like, I, I don't know, is that fair? I feel bad for those other aliens, or, or, or did they put in their orders and they're just waiting for uh, their order to come through? Um, all right, uh, am I getting to my ship yet? I, 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 I held, I basically kept hitting right, so get on ship, board ship. There we go. You slide back into the ship, closing the hatch behind you. The docking control beams begin guiding you safely clear of Monolith Burger. All right, we have taken once again to the expanse of space, and we are going to now lock in a new course. We need to go help out these two guys. I wonder what these two guys, who they are. Wink, wink, look at screen. Let's just keep, let's keep things moving. Navigation system activated. Full thrust necessary before maneuvering. Okay, we'll turn on the engines, and now we'll turn on the navigation system. Even though, you know, we're not moving, we're just locking in a course. I could have turned on the engines afterwards, right? Or, uh, I don't know how that works. Anyway, scan. Where are, where is the next location we can go? They stay, they mentioned Pestulon, so we know we need to go to Pestulon. And we have the planet Ortega. Hmm. Anything else? I don't see anything else. Oh, what's this? Planet Fleabut. That's where we just came from. So it doesn't appear that we can go to, uh, Pestulon. Huh. Well, the only other place we can go is Ortega, so let's set course for Ortega. Stand by, calculating course. Course locked in. And now we're gonna hit light speed because going to any other speed is just ridiculous. Five. And away we go. You know, the first time, actually, I'm trying to remember. No, the first time I did do the decoder thing, but uh, that whole, we'll say, sequence with the arcade machine and the decoder ring, that's actually completely um, optional. You can sort of sequence break the game and just skip that and jump straight to the, um, uh, straight to Ortega. So, that, that it's, it's actually kind of weird because the rest of the story will play out completely normal, but yet you don't actually understand what Roger's motivation is whatsoever. You're just like, well, whatever the heck's going on here? A flashing message on your something, 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 something. Basically, it's just telling me that I'm orbiting a planet Ortega. I guess that's cool. Uh, let's go look back at the cockpit view. Look around. I already know what I'm doing inside the ship. Look out 
Look in space. That's what I'm looking for. <sighs> Look at planet. I'm at the I'm at the place, right? I'm here. I, I should be here. Ugh. Look at screen. Alright, current sector 82. No course selected. Um, I should be there. Oh, maybe if I hit three to land. Maybe that will uh will help me out here. There we go. Let's go ahead and land on Ortega. Because why not? With a mighty wump, you set the aluminum mallard down on the surface of Ortega. Get up. Oh, uh, there. When I'm in that seat, I can type get up, but not not in mono mono mono. Uh, Ortega is what we're going to be saving this as, and let's go ahead, ahead and hit that red button. Press button, and that will let us leave the ship. Ah, my, my, this is one hot planet. Hopefully, you'll last more than a few minutes. All right, so we got to do things quick, don't we? Maybe? All right, so basically, we're going to begin our exploration. But too late, you realize that walking around unprotected on this planet is hazardous to your health. You feel your blood begin to boil. You sizzle into oblivion. This planet wouldn't be so bad if you could keep cool somehow. It's so hot you could fry a Vorlian Flemsnick egg. I'm speaking alien. That's why you don't understand what I'm saying. That's, that's, that's exactly that's my story. So if we look at our uh, our inventory, we do see that we got ourselves a fancy pair of thermo weave underwear, thermo weave shorts. They keep you cool, and they're oh so stylish. So let's go ahead and put on our underwear because, well, a second pair of underwear. Put on underwear. After figuring out which side is the front, you put on the thermo weave underwear. They power up automatically, keeping you comfy at all temperatures. Man, I get, I need a pair of those. That would that would be amazing if those existed in real life. Uh, although I, I feel like that was just an excuse for the two guys. They're like, I want the players to have to type in "put on underwear" some point in the game. Can we work that in? And they're like, I've got an idea. And that and then this is what we got. Uh, so it's a blah blah blah. It's really hot. It's a good thing we're wearing our thermal weave underwear. Otherwise, we would be like a fried egg. All right, so let's go ahead and do our exploration. Uh, I know that we have to head off to the left eventually. I can't remember if there's anything off to the right. I don't think there is though. No, it's just a dead end. And if we try to move that way, we will fall to our deaths and be like ah, and then we will like burn up in the lava because the thermal weave is good for we'll say ambient temperatures, but it doesn't really protect you well against lava. I don't know why that is. That's I guess it's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, you know, I, I, I suppose it's scientific, it's not magical. Oh, 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 what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? It appears that parts of this planet's surface are not entirely stable. Better be careful or, or you'll end up in that lava fondue below. Good to know. Thank you, narrator. Alright, um, maybe from here, do we want to head right? No, there's nothing really here, right? We're gonna head down. And what's this? There are some people, and they're doing weird weather experiment things. Let's look around. Look around. The planet Ortega is truly a lava lover's paradise. Volcanic activity constantly reshapes its surface. So if you have any maps older than last week, throw them out. Alright, um, let's go ahead and walk on down. Let's, hey, let's talk to these people. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh no! Oh wait, didn't the two guys say something about jello pistols? Way to go, aced. Aced? That's right, that's not a T, it's an exclamation mark. You blundered your way into way to You blundered your way to within the range of the pirate jello gun. You saw the in an impenetrable box of jello. Alright. As your life sputters to a close, you decide to cut down on desserts. Wait, wait, why can't I just eat my way out? I'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. I could do that. That's totally a viable way of getting around this. All right, so let's look at people. Let's see what they're up to. Pardon me. Okay, sorry, parser. Look at a guys. Oh, okay. You don't understand people, but you understand guys. Well, I suppose, okay, you have two guys from Andromeda. They're like, oh, we need to put the word guys in there. What about people? No. <laughs> Obviously loyal company men, the scumsoft employees are happily performing their duties. But looking at their weapons, you probably don't want to get too close. Maybe I should have done that before I walked down there to see them. 
Okay, so they are doing something. They're doing some sort of experiment. What do we have on our on our, our person? We have we have an invisibility belt. We could always use the invisibility belt. Maybe we could do that. Or on a stick. Hmm. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly what we, we do. They're, they're obviously looking up to the sky or something. Look at sky. The atmosphere has a definite red tint to it from the belching volcanoes and glowing lava. Okay. Maybe let's, let's go look around elsewhere. Maybe there's something else I can see that will uh, give us some sort, some sort of insight as to what we're supposed to do. Uh, Alright, so that appears to be a pirate ship. I, I, it kind of has uh, that sort of skull motif, actually. That kind of looks like uh, a little bit like the ship that we see on the uh, Space Quest 3 box art. Look around. Um, you find yourself at the base of a seemingly extinct, extinct volcano. Oh, R.I.P. volcanoes. <laughs> volcanoes no longer exist. They're gone. There is a short-range scout ship parked here, but where is the pilot? Look at ship! It's a speedy little short-range skull fighter, fully armed with the latest in offensive weaponry. You probably wouldn't want to tangle with one of these babies. Probably not. Let's, uh, let's walk back this way here. Okay, so we got these two guys. Ah, I can't remember what I'm supposed to do here. Did I forget something? I may have missed something. Um... Okay, so those guys are over there. I don't know what to do. Okay, let's put on belt. Okay, turn on belt. Looking at the belt, you notice that the power supply is very low. You decide to hold off until you really need it. Uh, okay. Um... Monol Astro Chicken Flight Hat. I, I, I don't know. Oh, wait, wait, they're leaving on their own. I, I thought that they might let leave on their own. I was like, is this a timer issue? I th you hear the roar of the pirate's scout ship taking off. The ship streaks across the sky to an unknown destination. Ah, nice. We actually get to see it taking off. All right, so now we can go ahead and do stuff. Over here. So let's go ahead and save the game as playing here. Let's look at equipment. There's a telescope. An anem an an anemometer an anemom. You know what? I I, I this, I've never rage quit over trying to say a word before. An anemometer meter an on a pole, some seismic equipment, and a crate of some sort. Okay, well let's go ahead and uh, let's. I, I I like the idea of a crate. Let's look. Let's look at the crate. And I'm pretty sure that this is the crate here that they're talking about. Look at crate. It's full of thermal detonators. And if we've learned anything from Star Wars, those are fun things. Take detonator. You pick up one of the detonators. Be careful. You could blow your fingers off with that thing. Yes, and we wouldn't want that, now would we? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look inside the telescope. What were they looking at? Look in telescope. You need to get real close and look in the little hole first. <laughs> really, you think? Okay. Let's try this. What are we looking at? Aha! You've discovered that force beam generator. And that moon must be Pestulon. So, Pestulon is the moon of Ortega. And that is the shield generator. Man, what whatever could we do to somehow... I don't know, save the two guys. That would be great. Well, let's, let's, uh, what, what is this thing? Look at, um, what's the equipment again? There's a telescope, an anemometer on a pole, some seismic equipment, and a crate of some sort. Let's take the pole. It's all yours! So I've now taken the pole. I think that's all I need from here. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all I need. So we're gonna go ahead and walk right, and now the ship should be gone. And, uh, if I recall correctly, we can continue walking right. There's a, there is a path that we can take, uh, up by the, uh, we'll say through or up the volcano? That's yeah, over here, there we go. Man, I, this, this does not look that familiar to me. Like, like, it looks familiar, but it's, 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 uh, I, it's obvious I have not played this that much. You reach the rim of the decayed cinder cone and are overwhelmed by the sight. An impressive machine of staggering size sits in the middle of the volcanic crater. 
Oh man, that thing is huge. Okay, let's go ahead and save before I do anything stupid. Uh, okay, I think I need to climb. So can I climb up or can I walk up here? I'm trying to see. Oh yes, there we go. Okay, yeah, I remember this now. Okay, so we're at the giant machine. We're gonna walk down the stairs. This will lead us down below. We walk over here, and if I recall correctly, there was a, uh, a ladder. There was a red ladder over to our right. So we'll walk over there. I, I like the way that how they played with distance in this game. You know, you could have your character really far off. You have these big scenes where you ha you're up close and you're far away. That, that, that was kind of a, a neat, we'll say, um, addition for adventure games uh, in the day. So let's say climb. So we're going to climb up the ladder up to the very top of the device thing. I love, I love how the ladder kind of just sort of, it, it curves. Well, I, I suppose it's not a bad thing. Okay, we're gonna save the game because I don't want to die, and I'm probably going to die. Oh, you know what? Screw it. We're gonna die. Oh, no! It wouldn't be so bad except for the, I'm skipping the message. All right. What we want to do is we want to walk up to the mouth of the device and drop the detonator, the thermal detonator. Detonator. The explosion disables the force field generator. You may now travel safely to Pestulon. All right. And we're going to climb back down. Climb down. There we go. Now we're going to kind of climb back down. So basically what we've done is we've uh, we've dropped a dirt detonator into an active vol- Wait, uh, no, wait, no, it's not an active volcano. We've dropped a detonator into an extinct volcano. All right. So we've taken out the- the shield generator, which should allow us to get to the planet Pestulon. Uh-oh, that detonator has apparently set off a chain reaction of earthquakes. You'd better get off this rock ASAP. Now, I was gonna say, I have a feeling that 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 event or that action on my part is going to re result in some, we'll say, you know, negative uh, results. We need to get off of Ortega before this volcano erupts and we are all doomed. So basically at this point here we just go ahead and we travel back to our ship. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember exactly how I came uh, came up with that solution, but I, I, you know, I remember it coming to me fairly quickly and it might have been because I had been on a, we'll say an adventure game, a binge, we'll say uh, before beforehand. Uh, when I had played it because the, the, the solution seemed pretty simple. I, I can't remember, do I want Yes, I do. I do, I want to. We're gonna go ahead and take another thermal detonator. Take detonator, because we never know when we might need another one of those detonators. And I think our score even went up, didn't it? It might have gone up. Uh, the, the one thing about the two guys, they, uh, they, were, they were great at, we'll say, trolling you. My, my, things have certainly changed since you were here last. That unstable rock has fallen into the simmering lava below. Oh no, however will we get across? Well, if you'll recall, we got this metal pole, and and it's a, oh sorry, it's a handy metal pole. It's not, not not that's not just your garden variety pole. No, that there is a handy one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the pole to pole vault our way across the gap. So we're gonna say pole vault. Uh, use mm, pole, and we're gonna your brow furrows in grim determination as you prepare for a tremendous leap. And here we go! Yeah! Boom! <laughs> the impact of your landing set off the thermal detonator. Your fragments are strewn over a wide area. Didn't mom always tell you not to play with firecrackers? Yes, she did. That's why I went in and I saved. I, I wanted to sort of show that. But you know, it's interesting that you get a point for it. You get points for it. So what I'm, I'm wonder if it's like uh, Space Quest Four. We'll we'll get to that uh, when we get to that game. But take detonator. Okay. Yeah, I got ten points. Put back detonator. Uh, put detonator in, uh, crate. Drop detonator. <laughs> I, I don't want it anymore. Don't drop it. Um, uh, fill crate. Take detonator. Only one per customer. Oh, I'm screwed. Okay, I'll just have to load my game. There might be a way to put it back in and get basically more points. Basically, there's a, a sort of a puzzle in Space Quest 4 that involves um, 
something explosive and picking up things and stuff and we're just gonna yeah I, I keep wanting to talk about Space Quest 4 it, it seems it seems that way anyways okay so we pull pull Volter or away the Romanian judge gives you a 9.5 a truly outstanding jump by one of the finest young athletes we've seen this season you'd like to try that again but your pole seems to have fallen into the tumultuous lava below oh well I guess we'll just have to get off the planet and there'll be plenty of time for pole vaulting later, Roger. And let's get back to our ship and get off of this planet. There we go. Are right, we on the ship? There we go. We're good. All right, sit down. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to save the game here as end because we are currently going to end this playthrough. I think this one's gone on for long enough. So. We, uh, we've, we've actually visited two different locations in this episode. We visited Monolith Burger and we cleared out the entire planet of Ortega. So next time we get to see, we'll say, the, the Pirates of Pestilon's home base. So uh, if you like the content would like to see more, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave it a thumbs down. Either way, let me know what you thought in the comment section. And uh, until next time, I would like to ask you all to game on.